Today I'm gonna to take you guys through some straddle L-sit training, but it's not static straddle L-sit training, it's dynamic straddle L-sit training. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna floss, open the position up using some mobility exercises, and then we're gonna play with entries and exits to the straddle L-sit position. That's gonna work great for general hip mobility. If you're working towards straddle presses, stall to press to handstand, straddle planche, and it'll even help you towards your middle splits. Okay, first of all, let's just floss the hip, open the hip up, increase our mobility, and get the hips nice and warm in and out of that straddle position. So I've come a little bit wider than shoulder width with my feet. And then I'm gonna drive the hip backwards. So I'm sticking the butt back as far as I can. I'm counterbalance using my arms and then I stand all the way back up to an open hip position. And then I'm gonna do that again, see if I can go a little bit deeper. Now obviously this is gonna be determined by adductor length, hamstring flexibility, calf flexibility. So you're gonna see different positions as you do it. Your mobility and how good you are at shifting weight backwards and counterbalancing what's in front. What we don't wanna do is this, or try and sit back without leaning forwards. So we need to lean forwards to counterbalance and then make sure we open the hip all the way back at the top again. And then just to floss through the hips a little bit more, I'm gonna do more of a Cossack position. I'm gonna come down on one side, keep one leg bent, back up onto the other side, straighten both legs. Same thing again. Think with the bent leg that's going into like a squat position and think you're driving the hip down. You're not taking the torso forwards. So torso stays upright. Try and keep the shoulder behind the knee. So when I come down to that position, my torso is staying here, my shoulder, doesn't come forwards, stays upright, and I just come down as far as I can. You can play with the distance the legs are apart, but make sure that the straight leg is staying flat on the floor, and you're not lifting this foot up. See, I can get much deeper if I take the shoulder forwards and lift that foot, but we wanna try and keep that foot down just to get into the adductor a little bit more, and not just so we can get into the adductor a little bit more and make it a little bit more of a challenge. Next, we need to make sure that we've got a cap on. If you don't have a cap on, you can use your fist. So you can put your fist by your forehead. But I'm just gonna see if I can now go back to that first movement, see if I can go all the way down. My target is to try and get the cap or my fist to touch the floor and then open all the way back up again to that open hip position. If that's okay, I can get rid of the cap or the fist. And now so I can get forehead to touch and back up. If I've still got range there, I can go a little bit wider with the feet, stick the hips back, see if I can get nose to touch back up. And you can continue to chin or chest, even shoulders, depending on your mobility and flexibility. So now I'm gonna go through that same straddle good morning position, keeping the back as flat as possible, taking the hips backwards. But instead of reaching out in front now, I'm gonna reach behind, grab the target, grab hold of it, put weight into it as I lean back, lift the balls of the feet up until I can sit onto the target. And I just reverse that back up. So a little push off the block, but I also reach forwards with the head and shoulders to counterbalance the hips. Open the hip all the way at the top, make sure I can open up. Now, if I'm not so flexible with that one, I'm gonna need a higher step or a higher box. I can even go to a bench or bend the knees as I come down. And then I'm gonna push and use a little bit more strength to come back up. But if I'm more flexible, I can get rid of the block or box and just reduce the height. Working all the way down till I can get my hands backwards and then I sit back into my hands, sit down onto the floor and then reverse that back up, push forwards up and stand all the way back up again. Now back to a straddle stretch. I'm just gonna use a band with this one. I'm gonna loop the band around something. I'm gonna get the butt cheeks out of the way so I get onto the sit bones. And then as long as I can sit upright in this position, this is a good position to start my straddle flexibility. If I look like this and I can't sit in the position, I need to raise the hips up. So sit on a cushion, a mat or a box until you feel like you can get your low back to be flattish. And then all I'm gonna do is start to pull on the band and walk my hands down until I feel a good stretch flexibility wise. The band where it splits into two is useful because I can have one hand on it, one hand on the other side, and then it's just gonna pull me forwards. Obviously the further I go back with the band, or the stronger the band is, the more intense the flexibility demand's gonna be. I can come up and back down with that. I could use a weight plate here if I'm a little bit more conditioned to it, or I could use nothing at all, and just reach forwards with the elbows, trying to lengthen the spine as I come up and down. So the goal is I'm trying to get past my feet with my elbows or my hands or my head instead of thinking that I wanna try and get my forehead to the floor because that's gonna promote flexion. We want lengthening of the spine.
Then a quick play with some compression work. Again, we're gonna try and keep this dynamic. So I'm gonna place my palms on the floor. I'm just gonna lift my feet up as high as I can. Now, if you can't do that with the palms down, come up onto fingertips and do the same thing. And then we can just do repetitions there. We could do circles, outwards, inwards, up and down, and everything in between. There is an option to go single leg, but I wouldn't work this one too much if you can do the double. But the same thing applies. If I go to palms or fingers, you can scale it to be easier or harder. If I take the palms towards the foot, it gets harder again. Another one is to go into a butterfly position, bring the toes together, put the hands in, ideally again, palms to the floor, and then I'm just gonna extend the legs, come back again for repetitions. These are particularly nasty and do make sure that you're doing enough flexibility because a lot of the time it's the flexibility that you're lacking, not this compression work. Next, I'm gonna go back to that straddle up exercise. I'm gonna go back to the wide straddle position. I'm keeping the back flat, taking the hips backwards, take the hands through. But now instead of just sitting down onto my butt as I go backwards, I'm gonna keep in the straight arm position and lift the feet up to my straddle L sit. And then I can put the feet back down and then come back up again. Now, if you don't have enough space for that flexibility wise, or just want a slightly easier progression, I can do the same thing on the step, but I might need a little bit of a bent knee to get into the position and to lift up. Hand position there is gonna make that one easier or harder. Hands backwards is much easier than hands forwards. And a nice one is to use parallettes. And if you don't have parallettes, you could use dumbbells. Just obviously you gotta get them in the right position and the right place. And they're a little bit limited in terms of the length of them, but they do work in the same way. So those moves are all entering from the front towards your straddle L sit position. The next progression would be entering from the backs. So if I go into a down dog like position here and I've got all my weight in my feet, I can lean forwards round the back, load the upper body and then tiptoe in to my straddle L and then lift up and then do the same on the way back out, which is a little bit harder. Again, if you run out of space, you could raise your hands up higher on some steps or boxes. Do the same thing, so load as much as you can. Walk around, find your appropriate straddle position. Just be careful with this one, that you don't extend the legs too fast because you could topple backwards and there's nothing to put your butt onto you, so you land onto the floor hard. If those entries feel quite easy, we can up it again by doing some sort of handstand entry to it. Now, it doesn't have to be a full handstand. It could be from the bottom of your press position and then you do like a little planche type movement into your straddle L and back again. But obviously they're quite demanding. A nice easier version but a similar movement is to use the wooden box. Now the wooden box is much easier because I'm already high, so my hip is above my hands and I don't have to lift myself into the position. So I can just come forwards, step in, and then I also have the safety, if I come down, the box is on the same height as my hands, so I don't smash into the floor. But you could do a combination of both, coming up onto tiptoes there, and then coming down to your straddle L, and then back up, which is very challenging. We can also use bent arm entries to straddle. So I could go into a shoulder stand, whether that's straight body or a tuck position, frog the legs out and around and come round to your straddle L and then reverse that back. Just make sure if you're new to that one, that either you have the box very close to the wall or you have someone standing here to stop you back splatting if you do go over. Now a nice fun one that helps with our straddle position by making it much easier is to use a band. The thicker the band, the more it's gonna help, but it is more intense from a flexibility point of view. So I'm gonna place the band on my low back. I'm gonna bend one knee and loop it on the foot while keeping a lot free on the other side. Bend the other leg, loop that over as well. Then I'm gonna hold onto the band while straightening one leg straight in the other leg. Now this is just a good stretching position that's gonna help open you up and keep you in a nice upright position. So you could do some long holds in this position while playing with the kids, watching TV, working on your laptop. But if I do this with the band and take it higher up on my back, now it's gonna counterbalance and help with the feet. So if I lift the feet up, careful, because they come up quite fast, and now rock forwards and push, I can get up into a more of a comfortable straddle L sit position. Now, I wouldn't normally program this one for my clients, but it's a fun one to play with and add in as supplementary work. And then for those of you that are a bit more advanced with the handstand work or the handstand press work, you can go into a handstand 
and then enter the straddle in two ways from here. So I could tuck down into a froggy position, so my legs are a little bit apart, round the low back, and then at the right time, start to straighten the legs, and that will take me through. Or I can do the same thing, starting in the handstand position, but now keeping the legs straight, I pass for a normal standard eccentric straddle press, but at the bottom, I bring the legs closer to the hands and then through to my straddle L suit. Now I'm doing it on the P bars, it is slightly easier because I want to talk to you when I do it. Let me know down in the comments if you have any questions regarding practicing the straddle L sit, training press handstand, or handstands in general. If you're after coaching or my app, check out my website www.paultwyman.com.au and I'll speak to you in the next one.